Amanda Salad in here from Love Life Yarn, and today we're going to be crocheting this mini stocking as part of our Holiday Makers Challenge. So you can see it's a small size, about six and a half inches from toe up to the top, not including our little hanger here. And it's perfect for a little gift card or some treats, and it just is a nice little decoration even on the tree. So it is part of the Holiday Makers Challenge where you can get free PDFs for nice little quick gifts like this. So if you want to sign up for the Holiday Makers Challenge, it's open through the end of the year, 2020, then you can just sign up below. I'll link it and you can join us as we encourage each other and challenge ourselves to make as many gifts as possible for Christmas. So you ready to get started? Let's go. Materials I need for this project include two skeins of DK weight yarn. I'm going to be using Lion Brand Kobu in denim and white. You also need a small size three millimeter hook, a yarn needle, some scissors, and a stitch marker. I have these cute little clover ones here that I like to use, especially when I'm working on something small, they have a little small size in there. And so I keep them in here in the little case. And these are all the materials we'll need to make our cute little stocking gift card holder. So let's get started. So we'll go ahead and have our little stitch marker handy because we're going to be using it very soon. And the first thing we're going to do is make a magic ring. So hold the yarn in your hand like this. And I'm just going to loop it around one finger, make an X. And then you go underneath the loop, the first loop here, and pull up the second loop. Oh, mine split a little bit. And there we go. Now make sure that your yarn end is going this direction. Grab your working yarn, chain one, and then let's make seven single crochet into our loop, making sure we're working over both of these pieces of yarn right here, the loop and the yarn tail. Almost there. And seven. Okay, now pull the yarn tail tightly and you'll see that it closes up nicely. Then go ahead and we're gonna work right here in this first stitch. See how it closes? If it gets a little loose right here, don't worry, we'll tighten it up in a minute. Go ahead and work right here. Mine's always a little tight, that very first stitch. And go ahead and work. Oh, so I didn't get all my plies there. Go ahead and do, we're going to do two single crochet in each stitch. Okay. Okay, for round two, we're going to just work into this very first one. Mine gets a little tight, so I'm going to use my fingernail. There we go. And I'm going to put two single crochet right here in this stitch and then in each stitch after it. But I always stop after the first one so that I can mark my first stitch. Grab my little yarn, a little stitch marker here, and I've made two, so I'm going to put it right here in the first one that I did. Okay, and then I'm going to work two in each. And at the end, you should have 14. Okay, so you can see how our circle is growing here. And now is the time if you want to pull that middle tighter, you can do that and it'll stay a little bit better than the first round. Now our next round 
you're going to single crochet in the first stitch and replace your marker and then work two single crochet in the next and repeat you'll single then work two single here single work two single and that's going to get you to 21 stitches and then our fourth round our last increase round you'll single crochet two and then single crochet two, two stitches in the next so like single crochet one here one here single crochet two in this stitch to increase and then at the end of that round you should have 28 stitches and we'll come back together and i'll show you how to change colors and work on the next all right i'm here at the end of my last round i have 27 stitches and i'm going to make my 28th right here because it was an increase but i'm going to change colors in the middle so once i have this pulled up i'm going to grab my other color here and pull it through and I've already fastened off my white because I knew that I wasn't going to need it anymore. And then slip stitch in this next stitch. It's going to make a little bit smoother of a transition so you don't have a big jump right here. So make it a little bit better. And now we're going to just single crochet around like normal. And this will become our new stitch one right here. Just count, make sure you still have 28 stitches when you come around. And we'll keep that 28 stitch mark as we go. And then you'll see it start to take shape. And from this point right here, when it's folded, you should go from there down. It should be three inches long when we start the heel. So go ahead and just keep working around and single crochet until it's three inches and then we'll work the heel. All right, I have my toe section here and the foot. And now we're going to work the heel. What we do though is we leave a space open for the heel and then we come back and work it with our contrasting color later. So go ahead and take out your stitch marker. And we're going to make this where the heel is, especially because this is where our little color change is. So we want to hide that in the bottom as much as possible. So we have 28 stitches still, so you're going to chain 14. Okay, cut our 14 and skip that many stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I'm going to start right here, just single crocheting around the rest. So we'll have another 14 stitches there. All right, down to our last two, so here's 13 and 14. Okay, so I've got, nope, I'm using some applies there again. So here is our heel, the part that's going to be the heel. We'll work into both this and these bottom skip stitches to turn it. So when you're working into this, because you're going to come back and work into it again, what I do is I only work into one loop, so I split the stitch. So I'm going to work into this back loop like this. And that's going to be stitch one again. So grab my stitch marker. And then you just work like that into each loop of these 14 chains. 
and then back around and that'll be row one or round one of your next part we're going to do 22 rounds even just in single crochet same way we did here we're going to do from here up 22 rounds even in single crochet this one we're starting right now counts as round one all right i've worked the leg of my stocking here up to this 20 rows here which for this gauge was about three inches right at three inches and we're ready to put the little cuff on and then we'll come back and get our heel put in right now it looks funny i know having this open but it works out well once the heel is in so we're going to change colors so like we did last time the last stitch forgot and i went ahead and did my last stitch so let's go ahead and take it back out get my yarn in and hook properly and remember when you're doing this last one you just pull up the loop and then you leave it so let's go ahead and get rid of this stitch marker get our contrasting color back which for me is white and pull through there we go and now remember we're going to slip stitch in that next stitch okay and this one's loose and that's okay because we can just pull the little tail here and grab my scissors and cut off the blue so that it's not attached anymore get rid of that all right now for the cuff you're going to start with double crochet you could chain three here but i like to use what's called a chainless double crochet which is what i use most all the time when it calls for double crochet so you pull it up because it looks more seamless this way to about twice the height of the hook get it even closer there we go twice the height of the hook bring it towards you like this and around get that out of the way my blue is getting in the way now keep in mind when you do this that you're going to want to hold it because if you don't it's just going to spin around and won't help any hold it still spin it around to where it looks like this it kind of looks like it has two loops on the hook yarn over and pull it underneath that strand yarn over and pull it through the last two which there we go and we can pull ours down this time because it's part of this this is loosened up a little bit so let's pull that down okay and now we're just going to double crochet in every stitch around setting us up for that next round of post double crochet stitches so don't be intimidated by that it is not as hard as it sounds it's just a matter of where you put your hook it's still a double crochet it just the only thing it changes is where you put your hook and i will show you how to do that so go ahead and double crochet all the way around okay i've finished my first round here and i joined with a slip stitch to that very first so if you did a chain three you'll join there otherwise you can do it to the top of your standing double crochet like i did and now you'll either chain three or do another chainless double crochet our first stitch all right and our next one is going to be a front post double crochet so we're going to work right here around this post so instead of going into the stitch like we normally do here we're going to go between the stitches okay so right in between them go around the post and put your hook out the other side so you're around it like this it just stick out like this okay and then you do a regular double crochet you yarn over pull the loop yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through the last two okay and now we're going to do a regular double crochet And then so it's the one the regular is in we're doing every other one is a front post so we'll go through there and 
There we go. And then you just repeat that. You work a regular double crochet and then a front post double all the way around to give us that little ribbed kind of texture there. And then we'll join again with a slip stitch to the first stitch. Okay, we've fastened off here. We're ready to begin our heel. Okay, it looks funny now, I know. Mm, looks good a mouth. So we're gonna start right here in this first stitch that we skipped. So you'll just join your yarn there. This is how I join mine. I just grab it, pull it through. I don't tie a knot or anything. And then I'll chain one, pull it tight. And now you're just going to single crochet in each stitch. So you'll end up with 14. Let me fix this. There we go. So you'll go across these 14. And then when you come across over to here, you'll work into the 14 that we chained. So we'll work into this chain right here. So when you get here, bring it closer, you'll just go right over here to this one. And this is my chain. And you'll start here and work across 14. So you have 28 stitches. And then join with the slip stitch to this very first one. Now to close up our heel here, we'll just work single crochet and then single crochet two together. We're going to use an invisible decrease. So let me show you how to do that. So here I am. I joined, but I'm going to go ahead and work in this first one. All right. I just wanted to join my first round, but you don't have to do that. I'm going to go and put a stitch marker in. Right now I'm pulling it so it looks like I have a little hole here. If that bothers you, you can always kind of take a piece of yarn and sew it up. It does not look so noticeable when I'm not pulling it taut. So we'll do five single crochet. Okay, and I'm going to single crochet two together, but I want to do it in a, an invisible way. So you put, you slip the stitch and put this in just the front loop of one. And then you come under and put it in the front loop of the second one. Yarn over and pull through both. And then yarn over and pull through just like a regular single crochet. So that actually is what's called the invisible single crochet decrease. And it looks a lot better than a single crochet two together. So work five and then single crochet two, you know, do the decrease around. And the next time you'll work four stitches and decrease and then three and then two, and then you'll end up just decreasing and then fasten off and weave it through those last few stitches and the heel will be done. Okay, now we're left with a little hole here because if we kept going and closed it all the way up, it would be pointed and it would make this stretch way too much. So we're going to need to sew it together. So I've cut my yarn and I have gone ahead and threaded this needle. I'm going to go in my first stitch. And then I'm going to reach around in here under this stitch. And I'm going to go back and forth this way. So around and then to the other side. And you just keep going back and forth this way until you have closed up this little seam and it will create the heel. All right, we are almost done with our stocking. See mine here, but I want to give it a little hanger. So I'm going to look right here where I like it laying flat. I'm going to join my yarn. And chain 10. Okay. 
Okay, then I'm going to join it right back here in the same stitch with the slip stitch. And that is going to be my little hanger, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. If it was a larger stocking, I would work single crochet into those chains, so since it's a very small, you know, pretty small one. I'm just going to fasten off. Make sure this one's tight there. Nice little hanger. And then I'll weave in those ends and all the other ends that are inside of here. And it is ready to go. There's your mini stocking. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Come visit us at lovelifeyarn.com for more than 150 free patterns and the rest of the Holiday Makers Challenge. Mm -hmm.